Hi, my name is Bill, and today I'm going to be showing you how to replace the user interface on your washer. The reason why you might have to do this is because the control panel isn't responding to inputs. For this repair, we'll be using a flathead screwdriver, a screwdriver with a VT15 star bit and a VT20 star bit, and a pair of channel locks. Warning, before doing any repairs, please disconnect your power source. So this will be the washer that we're using for this demonstration. It's a Kenmore. And keep in mind yours at home might be a little bit different than what we've got here, but the same technique should still apply. First thing we're going to do is we're going to shut the water off. And now we're going to get our washer turned around. And now we're going to disconnect the hoses. So we're going to use a pair of channel locks and turn them. And you might also want to make sure you have either towels or a bucket standing by because there will most likely still be water in your lines. Now we have to remove the three screws holding the top piece on. And to do that, we're going to use a VT20 star bit. And now that the screws are off, we can pull the top back and then it should lift right off. Now what we have to do is we have to take out the detergent dispenser and we're going to push down on this tab back here and pull that out all the way. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use a VT15 bit and we're going to remove the screw that's inside of here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to unplug our user interface right here. And so we've got this clip that holds it in place. So we're just going to lift up on that clip. And then we're going to pull the wires out. And now I'm going to remove the cable from each of these clips that holds it in place. So now what we're going to do is we're going to open up our washer door and we're going to push up in the middle here and that'll release another tab that holds it in the middle. And then on this side over here, there's another tab locking it in place on the inside. So this tab right here and all we're going to do is just push in on it and that should release the control panel the rest of the way. And what we're actually going to have to do is there are a couple of places where it's clipped in so you can lift up on it like that and it should pop off. We'll just pull this cable through the hole here, like so. So now we have to remove this user interface from the front panel here. So what we need to do is there are a bunch of tabs all along the edge, which we need to release. So I'm using this flathead screwdriver. And what you're gonna wanna do is after you release each tab, you're just gonna wanna lift up slightly so it doesn't fall back into place. There's one kind of hidden back here too. And all along, we're just gonna keep lifting like so. And get to the last one. So once you get the last one out, you should be able to just lift it straight out. So this whole piece right here is our user interface. What we have to do now is we have to remove all of these buttons so we can put them on the new one. So what I'm going to do is just go to flathead screwdriver. I'm going to go to each of the set of buttons and I'm going to push in on one of the locking tabs and that should release them and I can take them out. Oh. 
out. Now, you can grab your new OEM replacement user interface. If you don't have one already, you can find it on our online store. So now what we'll do is we'll line up the holes there with the locking tabs on our button set and push those in and lock them in place. Now we're going to put the user interface back into our front panel and what you want to do is just make sure everything is lined up to where their tabs go right there and just push everything down so the tabs snap back into place. And then once everything snaps back in, we'll just take a look at the front right here. Make sure all of our buttons are in the proper spot. This one's not, so we just want to shift that over a little bit if we can. So we're just going to grab onto this piece right here. There we go. Sounds like it popped back out. So there you go. Pop back into the place properly. And all we had to do was just pull the back of it a little bit so everything else looks like it's working now so we'll put it back on we just slide the cable right through the hole like so pull it through and now what we're going to do is we're going to keep our control panel tilted slightly forward and then push it so that it locks into place just like that. And now we'll put this cable back through these little clips that secure it in place. And now I can take our cable here and plug it back into the control board, like so. There we go. Make sure it's pushed in all the way. And now we'll put this screw back into place here. And we can put our dispenser drawer back in. Now we'll put the top of the washer back on. So we'll slide that down and then push it forward and into place. And now we'll screw the screws back in. And now we can reattach our water hoses. Now we can turn the water back on, make sure there's no leaks, and plug everything else in. Finally, don't forget to plug in your appliance. If you need to replace any parts for your appliances, you can find an OEM replacement part on our website pcapplianceRepair.com. Thanks for watching, and please don't forget to like, comment, and share our video. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Your support helps us make more videos just like these for you to watch for free.